how's it going out there? Uh, this is Wayne, and we're checking out um, saw saw blades or reciprocating saw blades. Uh, these are very, very, very powerful tool, and again, um, you know, similar to to drill bits and uh, some of the other things at the hardware store, um, it's very hard to decipher what kind of drill bit you need for what application. Do you need demo bits that are going to go through wood, but you've got some nails? Are you going to be cutting thick steel? Um, you know, some other things, stainless steel, uh, hardened steel. There's just so many different things uh, that that you need to consider when you go to buy a sawzall blade. So this is going to be a video. Uh, we're going to get the best of the best blades, and we're going to pit them all against each other. This stuff you can find at your big box store for the most part. Everything here was bought at a big box store. Nothing was special ordered. Um, so this is stuff you're going to be able to find and actually get a hold of. Uh, you know, I mean, you've just got so many different options here. If we come here, you got Rigid's got a wood blade. Milwaukee's got the axe blade. Uh, and then you start to get into your bimetal blades. Um, Diablo, Lennox. And then, you know, you start to get into uh, different grits and different cutting abrasives. This is carbide, this is carbide, this is diamond, and this is diamond. And then over here, uh, we got some new stuff coming out. Um, I, this is the first time I've seen these. Uh, this is the carbide infused blade. Uh, so this is kind of an interesting um, aspect. Basically, uh, carbide cuts just about anything. It's one of the hardest materials known to man, other than diamond. The only problem with diamond is it's super expensive, and uh, it just cuts really, really slow. And if you're trying to cut metal or something, bonding agent, whatever you bond to it, uh, usually gives out before the diamond does. So, where do we need to, what cutting blade do we need for the best all-purpose blade? What's the best wood blade? What's the best wood and nails blade? Um, where do the bimetals, bimetal blades stop cutting? Because these do cut just about anything um, as far as mild steel. But as soon as you start getting into hardened steel, you're going to start running into some issues. So, just like we did with the ultimate guide to drill bits, this is going to be the ultimate guide to sawzall blades. Um, we always got to come back to the Rockwell hardness scale rating. Why? Because we need to know what the hardness of the material is that we're cutting, and we need, to, we need to know what the hardness is of the blade. Just like with drill bits, you have to have one subject that is harder than the other. The cutting agent has to be significantly harder on the Rockwell hardness scale than the subject that you're cutting. Once we break it down scientifically like this, then the answer is obvious. Um, the only thing that's in question is how are these blades going to hold up? Carbide sounds great, and this is a great tool, and I really like what they're doing with some of their hole saws and, and some of the other things that they're coming out with. Uh, but how does it hold up? The harder we go, the harder the steel we go, and the harder you go with carbide, is it going to chip? Because as soon as you get to carbide, it's extremely fragile and difficult to deal with. That's why building these type of blades is so difficult to do. So, we're going to get a bunch of different stuff. We're going to get mild steel. we got mild steel here, mild steel here. Uh, couple other things. Then we're going to have leaf spring steel. I'll grab a leaf spring. Uh, tool steel. This would be your, your average tool steel. Something like this chisel and uh, maybe a wrench. Something like that. Um, and then wood chisels. Wood chisels are extremely hard. These are really, really hard. These are going to be up in the 62 range. As soon as we get out of the 40s and get up into the 50s and 60s, that's when these bimetal blades are going to stop cutting. They're going to stop working. They're just not going to, as soon as you jump up into the 40s, they're not going to work anymore. So the only thing that's going to cut those is this kind of, is carbide, uh, or even possibly diamond. Um, but I'm really, really interested to see how the, uh, see both of these are carbide, but this is like a grit. It's like a, a carbide fragments that are infused and impregnated into the steel. Uh, and this one, is little teeny tiny it's like a saw blade on a circular saw it's little teeny tiny uh chunks of carbide that they've somehow fused to that so as long as the carbide stays uh attached a eh, and doesn't chip uh i predict very very good things for this 
Um, this one here is going to be kind of the same thing. It's a carbide strip. It looks like this one has little carbide teeth individually welded on there or bonded on there. This one looks like an entire strip. If you look at it real close from this side, you can see that strip and somehow they've managed to, to bond that up here. So be it this being one solid piece and having a smaller TPI or tooth per inch rating, uh, I'm interested to see how this stuff all really works. Um, I've got high hopes for the carbide. That's all I can say. I haven't tried them out yet. This is all brand new. Uh, I actually just heard about them uh, a couple weeks ago. So then we're going to get into stainless steel. Um, you know, you got stainless steel, Maxim knife, um, and cut on that. Uh, and then finally, the hardest thing that we're going to be cutting today is this cobalt bit. This is a, a drill bit from TTP hardrills.com um, and basically the reason I'm using this drill bit is because it's the only one that actually has a certified rating of 66 Rockwell hardness scale testing. They actually sent the drill bits off. These were some of my uh, favorite regular drill bits to, to use for regular to mild steel uh, and even stainless steel and some hardened alloys. Um, these are great, but this is the only one that actually has a physical rating, so this is the only one we could test it on. So we'll actually try and cut this thing. Uh, diamond and carbide is the only thing that has a chance with this, I think. So and we got a file. We're going to cut lots of stuff. Lots of stuff. Um, and we're going to put some myths to rest, and um, we'll cut some plain wood too, because the demo guys out there that are just doing demolition, you really need a, a saw that's going to cut wood quickly. Uh, these bimetal blades will certainly cut through the nails in the steel, but it's going to take forever. Uh, the guys that are going to be doing demolition and cutting wood and, and tearing down houses and concrete, or I mean uh, tearing down houses and framework, um, are going to want this. And the only difference between this Milwaukee blade and a regular blade over here, um, and these have just kind of been, some of these are pretty old and they've just been sitting in a bag and they've got some moisture on them so they're a little rusty, but they're all brand new. Um, the axe has these little fang tips, and so they're claiming that that uh, will, will help out in tooth breakage, which if you look at it, it actually should, because the end of this tooth becomes so fine, uh, that little backup bit right there kind of really helps that out. So, um, cut all this stuff. I've even got some tile. Uh, real stone floor tile, super hard stuff. Uh, so... We're going to put every single one of these in their place, and you will know exactly what you need to buy at the end of this for your project. So stay with me, and uh, we'll get started. All right, now for the fun stuff. Uh, this is the new carbide cutting edge uh, carbide tipped blade from Diablo. Um, we've seen it cut wood and nails in wood, and now let's just see what it does with this three-quarter inch steel. So that did pretty well. Um, let's take a look at this here. And I don't see any damage to any of the teeth anywhere. No chipping yet. And it seemed to cut through it pretty good. Uh, that felt really good and solid. Seemed like it cut through a little bit faster than the uh, <clears throat> than the bimetal blades, actually. So we'll try the next one. Since we're starting to get to a little thicker piece of steel, um, I'm going to go ahead and switch this around so we can keep everything fair and even. Now again, uh, we're going to be doing tool steel, high grade tool steel. Uh, we already cut this um, softer steel with the, with the blade already, three quarter inch right here. Uh, this is going to be your higher grade tool steel, 54 to 58 Rockwell harness scale. So far, it has these have cut this steel, but they are pretty much trash uh, by the time they're done because the teeth are just about filed off of there. Okay, so 
So that definitely cut it the fastest by far. I'm starting to look for any damage. Um, and we can see, let's see if I can get something to look at and poke with here. We can begin to see a chip and a chip and a fairly significant chip off of that right there and there. Uh, so now as we start moving into these harder alloys, uh, we're going to really start seeing these things uh, take, take abuse. And that's what I was afraid of uh, with the carbide is it actually chipping out of there. Uh, but at what point it fails, we don't know. But that definitely cut that hard steel faster than anything else by far. And here we go again, our Diablo carbide tipped uh, metal cutting. So it's extra thick, extra heavy duty. Uh, 54 to 62 on the rock wall hardness scale. Let's see if it does it without chipping any teeth. That's what's going to be the main factor now is if the, chief, if, if, if the teeth chip. Impressive. That is really, really cool. This stuff, you can see how it just absolutely destroyed all these other blades. I mean, just made a mess out of them. Where's my leather in here? Or my Gerber tool. Let's see. And we're beginning to see some teeth starting to fail. Uh, so the carbide's getting jerked out of these. I would assume these two here do not have any carbide left on them. Um, but look at all the stuff we cut. I mean, this is still the same blade that we cut. Wood with nails, three quarter inch steel, um, our tool, chrome vandalum, uh, wrench, cut through that, and uh, just now it's starting to break down. So that's pretty impressive to me. Uh, we'll, keep, we'll keep going with this thing and see what it can really do here. Okay, so we got a file here. I just want to see if this thing can do anything. outer teeth here. I mean this blade is completely trash now. You can see it's blue. And uh, most all the carbide has been broken and chipped off of there. Um, but it did cut it. I mean this is a super hard piece of steel. This is a piece of steel that's designed to um, file you know regular steel. Uh, so I don't know exactly what it would be on the on the rock wall hardness scale rating. It'd probably be at the higher end of a tool steel. So I'm guessing it would be in that 58, maybe even pushing 60 uh, range for the Rockwell hardness scale test. But that's pretty cool. That's a bad blade. That's a bad, bad blade to cut through that. This stuff would just be completely toast and trashed um, long, long ago. I mean, this blade is trashed, but it did cut through before it got trashed. Not to mention, this is the blade that we've been using the entire time. We've cut steel, mild steel, hard steel. We've been cutting wrenches, uh, three-quarter inch steel, square, solid, uh, drill bits, um, 
all kinds of stuff. So I am super, super impressed with these. Even though this one is gone now, it sure has done a whole lot uh, before we were actually able to destroy it. Okay, so we're going to do some spring steel. Um, common leaf spring steel is going to be in that 58 to 62 Rockwell hardness scale rating. Uh, we did get a new blade for this one, and I'm actually going to put some lubrication on here because we've already seen that it'll cut, these things will cut just about anything. Um, I just kind of want to try it how I would do it with a little bit of lubrication and uh, actually see if we can get this to, to last quite a bit longer here and not just completely get smoked. So what I want to do is put some of this cut it paste on here and smear it around and then I'll have some of that to continue to put on it as we go forward. to stick but that is what is nice about this stuff is it does kind of stick to it to say okay so very cool stuff um, it's a little hard to tell if we had some chipping just because of the lubrication we put on there, it's kind of gumming things up to see. But it looks like one, two, three, nope, just one, two. It looks like we had two teeth chip cutting through this leaf spring steel. Uh, that's great. I mean, any of these other, um, you know, regular steel blades are just going to completely get toasted doing something like that. Just do a quick little comparison here. Dump that out. And if you just get one of these regular old run-of-the-mill blades here, and this is the exact same blade as these thicker ones, There's it's just thinner. That's all. Get this in some view as well. teeth are gone 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 so and you get that far uh, the other one cut all the way through right away so that's the difference it wouldn't have made any difference if it was a thicker all it is is extra steel up here there's absolutely no difference when the in the it just expand or it makes it so you don't jam the blade as much um, that's about all <clears throat> all right so now we've got our carbide tipped um, blade on here and this is you know cutting carb or this is cutting cast iron in the utmost of ideal conditions to be perfectly honest um, 
You know, normally you're not gonna have a lubricant like this, or you know, whoever's using it probably, probably isn't going to be taking the time to do so. Stay in there. So you can see that just burns through that a whole lot faster. Way, way faster. Um, and you know this is that same blade we were using before and there's a broken tooth or two uh, but it's gonna at least get you through and it's gonna get you through way way faster um, than the other than just your regular bimetal blades okay so now we're gonna try uh, cast iron um, it's actually a little more difficult than I thought finding information on cast iron I actually couldn't find a rock wall hardness scale rating there's just too many different kinds and um, I didn't really see a number for it, uh, but I know it's really super hard and I know these blades here specifically say cast iron on them. Um, so that's what it's for because it's extra hard. Uh, so how do we know if a piece of iron is cast? Well, this is a piece of cast iron. Uh, old gears, flywheels, um, stuff like this right here you can see the number it was cast into it also when we look around this side you can see the casting ring right in here and you can see the cast marks out here cast was a super tough iron uh, that wasn't easily machined uh, so that's why they poured it and cast it into the shape that they wanted uh, because it was tough to do the job that it needed to do but it's also uh, difficult to machine and work with uh, you can also tell by weight very heavy. It's way heavier than regular steel. You can tell it right away. Um, the other thing is, get a nice time to it. You can hear that ring for a while. Um, that means you have cast iron. Cast iron is uh, found in plumbing and um, engine block heads, uh, gears, fan belt, drive, drive belt, things like this right here. Uh, that's where you're going to find it mostly. So whether or not you encounter it that often, I don't know. But I know a plumber should uh, always keep um, some kind of carbide blade on. So we'll just go ahead and see what happens here. Um, let's see. We can put a bimetal blade on there and see what it does. Let's see if it does anything with this cast iron. I am going to go ahead and try and lubricate some of these so we can see, give it the best shot it's got. A bimetal blade will cut cast iron. It's just you're gonna spend a ton of money on blades because you're gonna burn them up before you get very far. Um, but a bimetal blade will cut cast iron. <laughs>
pinch. All right, so we got a Maxim knife blade. Um, that's going to be uh, in your, let's see here, 58 to 62. So now we're starting to get a little bit harder. Now we're at the top of the tool still range and up even more than that. So this is probably going to be sitting right in the 60s. Uh, we're going to cut the handle. So that would be the thickest part and the most fair part to start with. try this with one of these other blades here but I don't think a bimetal blade is going to do very much on this. I think it's just going to get worn out again. So we can use this one. It's still got some teeth at the edge. But I don't think it's going to cut. So that's pretty much not going to cut that. It marred it a little bit, but uh, it's going downhill pretty fast. Okay, so we're going to put the Diablo uh, bimetal blade through the same torture test. We did the uh, Lennox. Uh, this is going to be tool grade steel, 54 to 58 Rockwell hardness scale rating. So this is going to be pretty much twice as hard as our uh, mild steel. again the same things happening the uh, well, the teeth right there you see they've lost all their points uh, they're not completely smooth but um, it would make one cut it's not gonna make too many and if you look over here at the steel that's blued that's incredible heat and uh, heat and steel heat is going to be the number one thing that is going to start breaking down your steel so Will it do it? Uh, yeah, but not for very long. All right, so after doing all this testing, we really get to see uh, what blades work on what and why. And, um, you know, usually uh, the brand doesn't really matter. There's, there's, you know, Diablo, Milwaukee, Lennox, they're all putting out a pretty good quality product for the most part. The only one that seemed to have the most advantage is uh, like, a, like clearly an advantage are the this the Milwaukee axe uh, simply because of this tooth design um, you can see it clearly beat I mean we beat the crap out of this stuff uh, cutting metal and stone and all the stuff that it's not designed to do on purpose to see how it holds up <laughs> and you can see that it definitely this uh, hook tooth thin hook tooth design is um, far uh, 
not not as good as the uh, the Milwaukee design here. Um, so that was a distinct advantage. Most of these bimetal blades, I mean, if you have a Lennox and you have a uh, Diablo or a, the Torch from Milwaukee, um, <clears throat> that's going to be you're going to get roughly the same. I mean, it's gonna, it's not going to be a huge significant amount of difference like we saw with this one here. Um, biggest thing to remember is if you need thin cutting, you're going to cut like uh, maybe circles or something like that in wood or drywall. Your thinner blades are blades are better. Um, but these thicker blades disperse the heat more on these bimetal blades. So they're going to last longer and they're also not going to jam and buck and bend nearly as bad as these thinner blades. Uh, we could see that pretty obvious with like this one right here. If this was a nice thick blade like these, uh, it would have held up a little bit better. What was interesting to see was where the diamond shined and where the, uh, the carbide abrasive shined. Um, they cut, but they take a long time to do it. Uh, so it is nice to be able to, I would say it would be a good idea to have some of these in your, in your uh, tool kit. And the, uh, the diamond took longer as well, but it was the only one to cut the actual hardest thing, which was the drill bit uh, at a 66 Rockwell hardness scale. That was the only thing that actually managed to uh, cut that and, and cut it cleaner than anything else. When is that gonna be uh, an application for you? I don't know why you need to cut a drill bit in half or some steel that hard, but at least we know it does it. Um, the, the new players in the game are the carbide tipped and that's where I got to really see um, what happens here when I wanted to see what carbide did versus carbide because these are both carbide but this is a carbide tooth and this is a carbide grit. Uh, the carbide grit was obviously very slow and I was super impressed by these blades. Uh, the only problem seemed to be that the carbide would, would break. That's carbide's um, only issue is that it's extremely strong, extremely durable, super, super hard uh, material. It, its downfall is that it's brittle. It deals with the heat better than anything else. Any other kind of steel deals with the heat great. Um, it, the heat doesn't really affect it and break it down like it does these bimetal blades. Uh, however, getting it on a product, getting it to where we can use it properly seems to be the issue. Uh, these blades would last longer because the carbide is a grit than these and that seemed to be the main problem is that the carbide would, would just shatter and shear off of there. And then of course this one right here, uh, you know, this thing did really well right up until because this one is a solid strip. Um, and these have individual pieces of carbide brazed onto each tooth. When this flexes, it doesn't affect the cutting edge. However, when this one flexed, when it got hot, you can see it got hot right here, then the metal backing it flexed. And when it flexed, because it's one solid piece of carbide with little teeth in it instead of the, the individual chunks, that's when this blade broke down and failed. So when you see this one at the store, uh, keep that in mind. This blade will cut, but if you get any kind of binding or, or flexing, um, it's not going to hold up. And then the entire blade is gonna be destroyed and you're not gonna have anything to cut with. Uh, so Diablo is the only one that I know of right now that actually is uh, infusing the carbide into, into their blades. And as far as I'm concerned, I mean, as of right now, I'm not buying any more bimetal blades whatsoever. Uh, at the end of the day, that's what's gonna stay in my Sawzall and that's what's gonna stay in my bag. They come in different sizes. You can get the little ones, this here, uh, all the way up to the big nine inch ones right here. Um, but they just do everything. It's the best all around Sawzall blade that I could that I could see. It's gonna cut your cast iron, it's gonna cut steel, mild. That was the other issue with the carbide grit, is that if you cut something softer, like aluminum or, or even the mild steel, it begins to plug this up and then it starts to generate heat and then it's gonna start breaking down the blade. That's not what you wanna have happen. These were able to cut through that uh, and, not, and not gum up because there's a heat, much larger space right here. Um, did the ax cut through wooded nails slightly faster? Yeah, it did. But you're gonna to have to have these and these um, if you wanna use that. 
I can only see that these would be the best all around blade for me because they do everything well. I'm also gonna keep some of these and the diamond ones just in case we, you know, you get into something rough and maybe you break all the teeth off. Um, at least you'll have something for backup. But if you have a diamond, if you got a carbide grit and you got one of these carbide tooth blades or a couple of them, you're gonna last a whole lot longer and that should cut just about anything. I'm really not even gonna waste my money on bimetal blades anymore simply because, unless I need to make a fine cut, I guess. Um, but hopefully they'll take, they'll go back to the drawing board on this one. That one did not seem to work out that well. And for what I saw today, as impressive as these were, uh, you can bet that Milwaukee and Lennox are going to be coming out with something similar to this uh, in the very new f near future. Um, if I had any suggestions or want to, you know, if I, if I could see anything done different, the way these started to break down was the carbide breaking off and due to impact because this is a very violent action. It's a very powerful machine and it's, it's a rough cut gouge. I mean, you know, rough and tumble, get it done type of thing. So if they could somehow combine the cutting power of the grit and put some grit, the, the carbide or even diamond grit in the behind the carbide teeth in here, I don't know exactly how that would all work out, but if they could impregnate the steel with carbide up in here, uh, then once the teeth failed and the carbide had failed in the teeth, you would still have something to back you up to get that job done and get it finished. Um, that would combine the best of both worlds where you're going to have that fast action cutting for the softer metals and wood, and you're going to have that uh, super hard backup plan. So. I think there's still some evolving that needs to go on with these and hopefully between the other two companies uh, we'll be able to see that but as far as I can tell right now the best blade at the store is this one right here that's what's going in my bag and until I see something better um, that's where I'm going to stand so I hope that helps you guys I hope that uh, helps you pick something at the hardware store and uh, opened your mind to some other things that that um, you know we didn't really try before or haven't seen before and uh, if if you got the one of these you can cut just about anything that's what we found out so thanks for watching and stay tuned we're going to do lots more tool reviews we're going to do something similar uh, to this with hole saws coming up soon so stay tuned subscribe hit the like button share this with facebook g g plus twitter all that kind of stuff and help help your buddies out and help them see what they need to see to pick what they need to pick at the hardware store. Thanks a lot.